The amount you have to spend to acquire a new customer can make or break a business. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you some proven ways to significantly reduce your customer acquisition cost. Let's get straight into it. Now, the biggest shift that you can make in your marketing to reduce your customer acquisition cost is moving away from only running bottom of the funnel marketing. So what I mean by bottom of the funnel is most businesses out there only ever target and speak to customers who are actively looking for their product or service right now. It's estimated that there's only ever going to be about 1% of any market at any given time that are actively looking for that product or service. There are still 99% of other people out there who may well need what you can offer, but they just don't know about it yet. That problem isn't on their radar or they don't even know that your solution exists or how it can help them. So your job is to be in a position where you can educate the market to bring that out of market audience to an in-market audience that are actually considering buying your product or service. This shift in your marketing can make a monumental impact on your ability to convert customers and reduce your overall cost per acquisition. To give you an example of this, let's say we are a private dentist, right? So what most dentists will do is go on Google search, run some paid ads and target keywords like dentist near me or private dental surgery. They're then going to end up paying huge cost per clicks on that keyword and competing with a sea of other noise out there in an incredibly noisy and saturated marketplace with zero trust from their customers. So it's going to be very, very hard to convert that traffic because they don't know you and there's so many other options out there at that stage. Whereas instead, if that same dentist was to take a different approach and maybe target things that people might be searching for before they even know or have decided that they need a dentist, like why is the back of my tooth hurting or causes of toothache? And if they were to put some money behind that keyword, they would pay a significantly lower cost per click because there's less competition and it's a more informational search but they then have the ability to drive that visitor to an informational blog that is one, going to help to build massive trust, establish credibility, and then position your company as the go-to in that space. You could then either run retargeting campaigns to so that person who has visited that specific page for a free dental checkup, or and have a call to action within that blog post itself for people to come through and inquire. That way you're not competing with a load of other noise, you've built massive trust with the customer and you've paid much less to get that initial click so you're no longer competing in this sea of sharks and paying hundreds if not thousands to do so. So let's look at a quick example of this. So let's say for example, we're running a Google search campaign, we're targeting those bottom of funnel, high intent searches, but because there's so much competition out there, we're paying a high cost per click, so maybe we're paying about 25 pound cost per click on this, and we've got a 1,000 pound a month budget. Now it's fair to assume that with keywords like this, we can expect a higher conversion rate. So let's say we're able to convert about 10% of those visitors into leads, then 60% of those leads are qualified, and 50% turn into paying customers customers. We've then got an average CPA of about £833. If on the other hand we can find some informational content pieces to drive traffic to, we're going to pay a significantly lower cost per click, so maybe in the realms of like £1. And let's say obviously it's fair to assume that with a more informational top of funnel search, we're not going to convert as many of those visitors. But even if we were to convert, say, 1% of those, you'll see we've got a significantly lower cost per acquisition now as a result because we're paying so much less on the front end because we're thinking outside of the box in terms of the kind of customers we're targeting. And the thing to remember here is even if those visitors don't convert on that initial visit to the website, you now have the ability to retarget them and show people ads through retargeting campaigns where you can show testimonials, video case studies to build that trust, bring people back and gain a conversion that way. The nice thing about this approach as well, because you've built that massive trust and credibility on the front end by answering their question, a lot of the time when these people do decide 
trying to sign up or buy, they're not even looking at your competition, so it's a much easier sell. We've seen this time and time again with customers where we've run these kind of campaigns and we've seen things like the average time to close a sale has gone down from sometime months down to a matter of days because people have already made up their mind. They don't need so much convincing because they've already received that value from you. There's already a level of trust, credibility. You've already helped them to solve a problem. So they no longer need convincing and are just comparing you to a load of other businesses out there. Now the next thing you need to focus on if you're serious about reducing your customer acquisition cost is you need to become obsessive with testing and optimizing the customer journey. You can use tools like Hotjar or Lucky Orange to analyze visitor behavior on your website and watch back session recordings or heat maps to see where you may be losing customers, where customers may be getting confused or maybe they're filled with doubt because they're not seeing an answer to a particular question they have. If you can become obsessive with test testing and optimizing this over time to start increasing your conversion rate, you will again start to significantly reduce your cost per acquisition. However, it is important to say here when you're testing anything, whether it be on your website or your advertising campaigns, you want to make sure that you're not testing too many different elements at once. For example, if you go and change everything on your website from the buttons, the text, the headings, the images, the whole look and feel of your website, and you see an either an increase or decrease in conversion rate, it's very difficult to know which of those changes actually resulted in that increase or decrease. Now there will be some instances, like if you're going through a rebrand or you're getting a whole new website built, where it's difficult to avoid making those changes in bulk. But generally, if you are trying to test and optimize things, you want to make sure you're staggering the test that you're doing. For example, if you're running an ad campaign, instead of changing every single element, like the creative, the headline, the body text, try and change one thing at a time. So have a different, two different creatives with the same ad copy. That way you know which of those elements has actually impacted or made the change that you're seeing. If we have another look at this document, let's say we could just bump the conversion rate up by 1.5% by doing some tests. You'll start to see the impact this actually has on the revenue and the sales that we are able to generate as a result. Now, if you'd like to get some personalized advice on how to increase the conversion rate on your website, be sure to book your free website and marketing review today where one of our experienced team will send you over a 10 to 15 minute video screen share going through your website and showing you some practical things you can implement to start increasing the conversion rate and generating more sales online. There'll be a link in the description below this video. Now my final point here, which ties in nicely to what we were talking about with testing, is to make sure that you are tracking everything, no matter how small it might seem. The best way to do this is to keep a company scorecard, a marketing scorecard, whether you track this week on week, month on month, is going to depend on you know, how much active marketing you're doing. If you're spending a thousand pounds on marketing, you might not need to track it as often because you're not gonna have as much data. Whereas if you're spending a hundred thousand pound a month on marketing, you'll probably want to have a weekly, maybe even a daily scorecard where you can analyze the these metrics. You'll then want to have a section on there for notes. So if you're changing anything, whether that be a change on the website, maybe you've updated your pricing, maybe you've changed your sales process, you'll want to make sure that you're making a note and also putting the date when that change happened. So if you then see in the following days or the following weeks that there has been a decline in sales or in conversions, you've then got an idea of what might have actually caused that. The problem most businesses have is changes are made so often and nobody's keeping a track of when those changes were made so it's very difficult to correlate what may have actually caused an impact either an increase or a decrease in your customer acquisition cost. So there you have it guys, I really hope that video's helped. I'm gonna be linking to two videos after this one, whether you're an e-commerce business or a business looking to generate leads that are going to give you some marketing strategies you can use to start further reducing your cost per acquisition. I'll see you there.